Ruby Pantry. So I'm excited to bring you along for a wintertime favorite. We eat soup all winter and tonight's soup is going to be cream of chicken soup. I absolutely adore this recipe. It reminds me of a few other items that I've made in the past that uh, are dear to my heart. And so um, it's kind of my version of a chicken a la king soup. Uh, so if that inspires you to stay with me, I hope that you go down in the about section below, check out all the links that I've left for you. I've got my Wild Tree website where you can shop for all natural organic products. I've got my um, Facebook page, go say hi. If you make this, post a picture on my Facebook page. Um, I also have my Zacon Foods link. Go over there and for free, you sign up with your email address. They won't spam you, but they will email you and they have an event in your area to save you some huge money on deep discounted, top quality meats. Okay guys, so let's go make a delicious pot of chicken, creamy chicken soup. Come on. So I thought I'd bring you along for a little bit of what I'm doing. Um, I know the intro tells you that I'm getting ready to make chicken soup, which I am. And this is um, reminiscent of chicken a la king because it has some of the same ingredients in it. But I'm also going to pan some soup tomorrow and that would be uh, habitat soup or split pea and ham. And so I'm getting, while I've got the veggies out, I'm prepping for both. And because I actually stew my chicken first, I want to keep my vegetables aside. I will put some, uh, some of the celery leaves in there with the chicken to flavor it and bay leaves, but you'll see that. Anyway, so everything is kind of in half, except I have more carrots and less celery in the pea soup recipe than I do um, for the chicken. And there's uh, each one's going to get half of a sweet onion. That's what this little one is. These are called Sweetie Sweets. And half of a regular yellow onion that are delicious. Um, I was lucky enough to be blessed with 80 pounds of onions and I made a ton of onion jam. I'm getting ready to make another onion canning project that I'll bring you along for. So if you're not a subscriber, stay tuned because I'll be canning some split pea soup up and um, putting that on the shelf and restocking all my soups because we've pretty much depleted everything. So just giving this a good rough chop here. And this onion, I'm gonna, this is for the soup, the chicken soup. And so what I'm gonna do, I don't normally put a whole lot of onion in my chicken soup. So I'm gonna take this quarter of the onion and that's gonna go in with the celery and the stock. And it's just gonna make a beautiful stock. So that's my goal with that. It would be just like if you were gonna make a stock with vegetables in it. Go ahead and put some flavoring in there while you're stewing your hen. So pick this up. And then I'm just dividing it, and when I'm done with this, um, my chicken soup has celery, carrots, mushrooms, it's going to have some onion, and then it also is going to have pimento and a uh, little bit of frozen peas. And we're going to use Thermflow. For those of you that are not familiar, Thermflow is a modified food starch that you can actually can with because they really don't recommend you use flour or cornstarch for canning purposes. Um, it, if you've ever heated up a gravy and realized it really didn't heat up the same as texture as it was the night before, that's why. And so this will hold up in the canning process. There's not a whole lot of information though on recipes for this, so it's kind of been a challenge to figure out what I do. And that's the same with the um, clear gel, the instant clear gel <clears throat> that I use for canning as well, thickening agent. Um, works just like cornstarch. Anyway, so this is what we're doing and it's going to be so delicious. I'm super excited because I love chicken a la king and so does my husband. So we're just going to have a little bit makeover. And I still have garlic to put in here, some garlic in there. So, so my sweet along. soup veggies are ready to go in the refrigerator for tomorrow. And then for tonight, and I'm hoping to can a couple of these jars too and show you how Thermflow works out for canning. Um, 
Tonight though, I've got about well, three or four quarts of water in this uh, seven quart stock pot. And I've got a carrot, um, a quarter of that onion, and that's the yellow onion. And then I love celery, and I know some people think it's too strong, but I can't get enough celery. So I'm gonna put celery in here. And note that the celery is gonna go away, and so is the carrot. All these vegetables, once this chicken is poached off correctly, is going to be strained out. And so now we need, so now what I want to do is put in a good cup and a quarter, cup and a half of a nice drinking Chardonnay, a dry white wine. So uh, you don't want anything sweet in here. And that just adds a little background taste. So I've got two big chicken breasts here. I'm going to poach those off and Look how huge these are. They gotta weigh a pound a piece, if not more. That's enough for two people. <laughs> and if it looks like my pot is not big enough, then we're going to uh, get a bigger pot. But I think we're gonna just make enough for this pot to be full, is how I wanna do it. So go ahead and reach in here. And these are boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I'm leaving the little bit of fat that's on there, I'm leaving that on because that means flavor, and it's just going to be delicious. Leaves. I'm going to put in this size pot. I'm going to go ahead and put. Um, ooh, these smell good. Two pretty good sized bay leaves in there. Go ahead and finish filling this with water. And I also add some Nors. Um, concentrated chicken stock. So if you guys haven't seen me use this in a while, this is what it is. And it's a liquid concentrate chicken base. So it's really good. It's just got an excellent flavor. And it's kind of a thick liquid, as you can see. Um, I'm gonna shake this up. And we're gonna add a little bit of that, there we go just for some added flavor because there's no bones, no skin, and so there's not a whole lot of flavor gonna come out of the chicken. It's gonna need a little bit of help. So let's get over to the stove. Give this a stir. We need a little salt and pepper in there, pretty sure. And uh, we'll so get to cooking. about a tablespoon of cracked black pepper. I wanna make sure that I um, let you know everything I'm putting in here. Just a pinch of red pepper flakes. Um, it just adds a, a layer in the background of flavor. And then of course we want some, a um, little bit of salt, not much. Himalayan pink salt. You can always add salt later, so I don't add too, too much. Maybe a teaspoon at this point. And we'll give it a good zhuzh around the pool. And remember, the volume of this is gonna go down because of the vegetables that we're gonna strain out. We're just creating a stock here. So, bring this up to so a boil, turn it down for to simmer. about almost an hour. I mean, it's been 50 minutes from start till now, and that's plenty of time for this chicken. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get my chicken out of there, and then we're gonna go ahead and strain out the vegetables that are in there because they've done their job. I really don't need them to go any further. So let's grab a chicken thigh. And I, you know what, I, I went ahead and put those other two chicken thighs in because I can use that right now as a good time salad. to test your stock to see if you've got enough seasoning, if you need more chicken flavor to it. Just take a spoon and... Mm. It's outstanding, I want to delicious. I don't need a little more pepper because I really love black pepper, but that would be, you know, totally up to you on what you want. Mm, you can taste the celery and the sweetness from the carrot. It just really is delicious. And this is a lot of chicken. So I can really judge now. I'm gonna let that chicken cool till I can handle it. Um, I can judge how much chicken I need in here. And then we'll put our other vegetables in. It's gonna be fantastic. Okay, I think there's another piece in here somewhere. Or is it just all veggies? Okay, so that's all vegetables. We're gonna get that um, 
strained out of there and I'll bring you back when we're cutting up chicken. And we'll talk a little bit more. Mm. As you can see, I've got all my meat cubed up and it just, it's way more than I'm gonna need for that soup. But like I said, I'm gonna make a uh, chicken salad with what's left. Okay, so, so my vegetables are now as tender as I need them to be. And so I've got a strainer here and I'm just gonna go in there and dip just like if, if it was a spider and get these out. And if I was gonna leave this stock to stay clear, I would strain this through a cheesecloth um, as well and make it a really nice clear stock. But I'm not worried about it because we're gonna thicken this and we're adding some half and half. And I know a lot of you uh, canning guru nuts out there, and I'm one of them, is gonna say it's not recommended you can uh, milk products. And no it isn't, but in every situation, I think the federal guidelines always goes on the side of caution, if you will. And I don't believe that I'm using enough to make a difference. So I want to make sure I've gotten everything, large pieces out of there. And look at that golden broth. It's just beautiful. I think I see a little onion floating. Here we go. So I'm going to get that piece of onion out of there. And now it's time to add our vegetables. And we'll probably be adding some water to this, but we'll we'll make we'll see what happens. I'm not going to add the chicken back in, the cube chicken until it's time to thicken it. If that makes sense. So you can see that it's still at a really nice simmer and we're going to add our veggies. I'll be right back. So I've got my broth back up to a boil and I'm gonna add two jars of pimentos. I feel like you have to have this in this particular application and these are four ounce jars so there's a total of eight ounces going in. I love pimentos and somebody once told me oh they're too expensive buy Roasted red peppers or roast them yourself. It's the same thing and it is not at all the same thing Pimentos I grew them this year for the first time and they definitely have a unique flavor that Just regular red bell peppers do not have and then my bag of vegetables that are already prepped is going in And it seems like an awful lot, but you know vegetables let off a lot of water they're gonna kind of shrink down and then we'll add our chicken and thicken it and it's going to be delicious. I cannot wait for this soup. So this has got to go back up to a simmer and probably simmer until all the vegetables are tender for about 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. And I'll bring you back when we're adding the chicken and thickening it up. Mm, delicious. Oh, and at the last minute, I'm going to add some peas because that's pretty classic in a... Um, Chicken I have got this to a pretty vigorous simmer and as you can see it's meat to vegetables it's a really nice ratio so I'm going to go ahead and add my frozen peas because they're going to cool this mix down so that's a cup we're of gonna frozen add our peas. thickener and we're going to add that a little bit at a time because I don't want it too thick so remember we had a half a cup of the therm flow and a cup of half and half. So we'll go ahead and stir half of that mixture okay, in we have and see what happens. boiling going on, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this. I don't think that's thick enough. So I ended up adding a full cup and a half of Thermflow and a cup and a half of half and half. And it's not super thick, um, but I'm okay with that because I, I, in the canning process, you want it to stay kind of thin, but it still has that creamy feel to it on your palate. And then we'll see how this cans up. I mean, this is going to be fantastic. In the old ball canning book, for Chicken a la King, they have you add flour. And people did it for years and years and years. My grandmother and my mother all did it. And we're all still here. Well, they aren't, but... I'm still here and I ate plenty of that. Put some fresh cracked pepper on here. I know it doesn't need any salt because the broth is 
absolutely fantastic. And this isn't super thick, but it isn't soupy soupy either. Um, you could thicken it some more if you wanted to. I, I'm going to leave it like it is for now, especially if I'm going to can any of this. I'll leave it just like it is. And if my husband wants it thicker, I'll top it with some dumplings. This would be great with dumplings or puff pastry on top, like a pot pie. Thicken it a little bit and make pot pie. So let's get a bite. It's screaming hot, but <laughs> let's try to get a bite. Okay, I got a little pimento, carrot, celery, chicken, peas. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Outstanding. Mmm. Broth is delicious. A little thicker version, totally chicken a la king. So I hope this inspires you to dress your chicken a la king up in a different outfit and make soup out of it. It's fantastic. I can't wait to see you next time. I hope if you're not a subscriber, you subscribe. And I truly hope you come back to see me, see how I can this, and see how it comes out. All right, guys. Can't wait to see you next time. God bless.